Watchers of World Leaders, who has the best? Well, let's stay tuned and find out. As a Canadian, I figured the first person I had to cover was our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Now, he's been spotted many times wearing an IWC regulator. This is a very interesting watch which has a unique time display format in that the minutes, seconds, and hours are all in different subdials, and so they never actually tell time the same way like a standard watch would. This was actually a complication used by watchmakers so that they can ultimately sync all of their clocks and pocket watches very easily since the seconds indicator was super easy to find and super easy to sync with all of their other timekeeping devices, as well as of course the minutes and the hours. Ultimately, it's powered by a very interesting pocket watch movement that's manual winding. And I think this is a really unique watch from IWC that is great and that maybe potentially they can even explore doing it again in the future because it is such a clean and very nice design overall. Now let's talk about the famous tech billionaire turned space cowboy Elon Musk. And of course, in true Elon Musk fashion, he has to don the wrist with an RM. This is actually the Richard Mille 29. And it's a watch that's very interesting in that it's kind of a skeleton dial kind of how you know Elon is a skeleton of a human being I don't know not really it is a watch that definitely is attention seeking as for sure, as uh, Elon Musk can be sometimes and of course we all hope his Twitter acquisition goes through next is the former leader and head of Twitter <laughs> Jack Dorsey now he actually wears a super interesting watch that I really personally like and that's from a super underrated brand at least by modern standards from Cartier he actually wears the Cartier crash but his is really interesting in that it's in a rose gold case and skeletonized, fully skeletonized. Now this was a watch that was actually made in the 60s that actually has a very interesting story and there's really three stories that people point to. So the story that most people are familiar with is the actual crash story, which is where the nickname is actually derived from. And that is when the Cartier client was wearing a Cartier Bangois Allongé that ultimately got wrecked in a car crash. And so that person brought that watch back to Cartier. Cartier took a mold of the watch and ultimately produced the Cartier crash as we know it today. Now, that is really an urban myth and legend because, well, there's no records of that watch itself. And Cartier certainly would have kept it for their records had it been the case. So now that we've established that the crash story is really more myth than reality, let's get into what I feel are really the reasons that this watch was designed. The first being, of course, the fact that it's a product of the time it was made in. The crash was originally made in the 60s, which was a huge time for social and political change. I mean, not just there were huge social and political movements, but also fashion, design, music was just completely altered during this era. And really the crash is a byproduct of the era it was made in, right? It's a very unique kind of very avant-garde design, if you will call it, from a brand that typically has very classy and classic designs that are typically timeless. And so for that reason, that was one of the stories Jean-Jacques Cartier, the man who really designed this watch, uh, originally made the crash. But in my opinion, that's not the real reason. And it goes into the third story, which is uh, frequently referred to as the real reason the Cartier crash was made. Now this was the 60s and there were many artists that were prominent, one of them being Salvador Dali and Jean-Jacques Cartier, who was the head of Cartier at the time, was a real fan of his work. And so you can definitely find a lot of Dali impersonation and a lot of Dali inspiration in the Cartier crash, especially if you refer to one of his art pieces. Obviously these melting clocks look a lot like the kind of melting clock design of the Cartier crash. Now Salvador Dali actually worked with a watch brand prior to uh, the Cartier crash being released, and that brand was Bulgari. And apparently Jean-Jacques Cartier was extremely offended and did not like the fact that Salvador Dali was working with Bulgari as opposed to Cartier. And so he really made this piece as a statement, and it sure definitely sent a shockwave to the watch industry. Ultimately, I think this is a really cool, elegant, and quirky design that is definitely evocative of the 60s, but also I think is a testament to the timeless quality with which Cartier watches are made. At the end of the day, this is still a very relevant design. One of these watches actually from the 60s just sold at auction for over a million dollars, and it's become an extremely popular watch because it's donned the wrist of, of a number of celebrities, namely Kanye West, as well as Tyler, the creator. But at the end of the day, it's just a watch that's unlike anything else, and really amazing. Now moving on to the president of my new home country, the president of the United States, Joe Biden. And he was actually spotted with a Rolex Datejust. Now his specific reference, I guess, is referred to now as the Biden special or the Biden Datejust. 
in that it has a smooth bezel with a jubilee bracelet and a blue dial and stick indices. I actually think this is a phenomenal watch and a great looking one and I think it's a great alternative at least from Rolex from for example your AP Royal Oaks or uh, your Patek Nautilus as in your blue dial sports watches because this is super versatile with that smooth bezel I think it's both sporty but it can also be dressed up in the same way that a Nautilus or Royal Oak can be. Overall, not much needs to be said. It's a very rugged and durable watch. It wears super well. It has that awesome Jubilee bracelet from Rolex, which I think personally is one of, if not their best bracelets. And again, I think the format of this Datejust is super versatile and really lends itself to any occasion. The next watch is fit for a prince, Prince Charles that is. Now he actually has a very interesting taste in watches in that it's really different from the norm essentially. He actually wears a Parmigiani Fleurier Toric chronograph. Now this is a really interesting watch first and foremost for the movement that powers it. It's actually the Zenith El Primero, a movement that was featured not only in obviously El Primero watches but also in the Rolex Daytona for example. It's a legendary chronograph movement in that it was the first Swiss fully automatic chronograph movement that was also a high beat movement. Now this watch has a really interesting design in that it's in yellow gold with a kind of double step case, a guilloche dial, and it represents a time in Parmigiani Fleurier's history before they became a fully integrated manufacturer. Nowadays they're a super high quality watchmaker and watch brand that ultimately makes everything in house. They're fully vertically integrated. So from their dials to their cases to their movement components to their movements themselves, they're all completely made in house by Parmigiani Fleurier. And this is one of these brands that are completely toxic on the resale market. I mean, we're talking 30 to 50% off all day on a Parmigiani Fleurier. So that's really just represents a lot of value for those in the know and those who really appreciate those finer details in watches. So I have to admit, this is actually a very interesting and unique choice from the future King of England that I personally really appreciate because it's so different from the norm and so different from what we would expect somebody who is in a prominent position to wear. And last but certainly not least is the wannabe space cowboy Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, oh man, we all love Jeff. He actually wears a watch that's extremely popular in the watch industry and that is the Omega Speedmaster. He recently wore it in his trip to space which ultimately corroborated the fact that this new generation of Speedmasters is flight ready and can actually go to space. Now the Speedmaster obviously has a tremendous history and heritage, mostly known for it being the first watch worn on the moon. However, it is important to know that the Speedmaster actually started uh, as a chronograph, but a racing chronograph. So the original Speedmaster was the reference CK2915 that was originally released in 1957. It was only later on that the Speedmaster became a, the moon watch and became that watch that could be worn in space. I think ultimately that history and heritage is awesome. And the Speedmaster itself is one of, if not the most iconic watches in the world today. And of course is, in my opinion, the most iconic chronograph ever made for that specific reason. I mean, come on, it went to space and it did, was worn on the moon. So the watch he's wearing is the Hesalite version as opposed to the Sapphire Crystal version because that's the only one that can be worn in space. And he wore it to space on a really interesting Blue Origin strap that was made by Omega and that actually became a release uh, from Omega that could be bought for, by us consumers. Overall, the Speedmaster, not much else needs to be said. It's a super classic watch that is super iconic and ultimately it's a timeless classic that will continue to endure for the next 300 to 8,000 years. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more videos in the future, and let us know down in the comments below what videos you would like to see here on the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel. Thanks guys, and until next time, see you.